I know Senator Al Franken puts about as much fear into many of you out there as well as all the uh, taxation planned uh, in the few next few months and years ahead. So I thought I'd give you an update. Joining us now is the other side to the party, Senator Norm Coleman, who's uh, locked in this legal battle, if you will, with the uh, former comedian from Saturday Night Live. Norm Coleman, welcome back to the program. Hi. Good to be back, Jason. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for joining us. I know these are hectic times. Now, you've got a situation here where you've got to go to the Minnesota State Supreme Court. Your lawyers say you are going to do that. When do we expect a formal appeal? Uh, we'll file the appeal uh, early next week, uh, late late Monday, perhaps latest uh, Tuesday. We're just going over to make sure that we get everything lined up. We expect that once we file the appeal that the Minnesota Supreme Court will set an expedited schedule for the filing of briefs, and, and so we want to be ready for that. I do want to make just one, th- one note one thing, Jason, that sure. not many have talked about. Uh, the basis of our appeal, the fundamental basis, is the Constitution of the United States. It's called equal protection and due process. Right. Uh, this will be the first forum in which those issues will actually uh, be, be reviewed. The trial court... Uh, started or set forth in its, in its opinion that they didn't have the authority to deal with equal protection. They then went to opine about it, but in the very beginning they said they, they, they didn't uh, give us the opportunity to make the case we wanted to make uh, about differing standards. If you were in Minneapolis and, and uh, you had a witness your absentee ballot who wasn't registered, your vote was going to count because they didn't check for it. But if you were in Carver County, you uh, yeah. in, in Lyon County, you're then, uh, you had a witness uh, who wasn't registered. Your votes still haven't been counted. Uh, so the whole issue of, of the, the varying standards and uh, the, the, you know, the fact that your ballot may not be counted simply because of where you lived, which we think presents serious constitutional questions, this will be the first time in the Minnesota Supreme Court that a court will say, yes, we have jurisdiction, and yes, we're going to deal with those issues. Well, I'm a little confused that the trial court wouldn't deal with those issues. Now, again, they're a specially appointed court, but as as you know, uh, was it last week or two weeks ago, the Iowa State Supreme Court ruled in favor of gay marriage based on that state's uh, equal protection clause or uniformity standard. The state of Minnesota's court, highest court, has ruled on our uniformity standard or equal protection in the past. Why would a trial court say we're not going to even consider that particular uh, legal reasoning? Well, I, you know, perhaps uh, trial courts look at themselves as, uh, you know, dealing with the factual issue in front of us, and this court essentially said we're not going to look back. They did, by the way, in their opinion, then talk a lot about equal protection, but they made it very clear that they don't have jurisdiction uh, to deal with this issue. And so the result of that was during the trial, our, uh, much of what we laid out on equal protection uh, was laid out in what they call office of proof. But the bottom line is, listen, I'm not jumping all over this court. They looked at what's in front of them. They set a, a, a very strict standard of compliance. One, Jason, by the way, that you and I, on other circumstances, may not argue about if that's mm-hmm. the standard everywhere. But if, on the one hand, if you have in Democrat-dominated areas a very liberal standard in, in which just about everything comes in, and then in conservative areas you have a tougher standard, and then ultimately you have a trial court that puts in that, that says the standard goes far beyond what was in effect in any Minnesota county anywhere, You've got real equal protection and due process problems, and we you know, are confident that the Supreme Court is going to look at those and open up a lot more ballots. Well, of course, as constitutional scholars know, that I, you know, I think the due process clause has been abused over the years to go from procedural due process into substantive or substantive due process. But regardless, the equal protection clause clearly applies to the states that if you have two situations in a similar circumstance, they need to be treated equally. And what your case has always been about is if you have one of these 4,000 voters that your camp says are disenfranchised who voted one way in one county and a similar voter, voter voted another way in another county, one might count one might not. That is not equal protection, is it? And the trial court uh, would say they, they would say that, uh, well, you know, garden variety uh, problems happen in all elections. This is not about a garden variety problem. Uh, the, the trial court made mention of Bush versus Gore and said it has limited application, but said even if it did have application, they they note Bush versus Gore that you could have had different kind of election, you know, ballot machines, counting machines in different counties. We don't argue with that, but Jason, if that ballot county machine was such that in Carver County you had a filter that says we're not accepting ballots that in which witnesses aren't registered, but you didn't have that filter in Minneapolis, you didn't have it in, in Duluth, if, if that machine in Plymouth, Minnesota, 
took a close look at where the signatures matched, and in this case, 70 ballots still aren't counted there. But I again, get back to Minneapolis, uh, in which out of 17,000 ballots cast, uh, less than a, a handful, less than five are rejected for that reason. If the machines had different filters in different cities and different counties, that would present a serious constitutional problem. That's what we have here. And, and as a result, you still have thousands of Minnesotans whose votes haven't been counted. And so this race isn't done yet. You know, I know you've, you don't have much time today. Uh, Senator Norm Coleman is our guest on the Coleman-Franken battle in Minnesota. Uh, and this is really a battle for the, the future of the United States Senate. As Franken would put the uh, Democrats to 59, they would don't just need a couple of uh, more liberal senators to uphold, uh, or I should say, um, you know, invoke cloture and remove any filibuster opportunity on a number of pieces of legislation. Like should car check right to a secret election, exactly, and, and a secret ballot in a union election, and and many more. So it has great import uh, uh, nationwide. Here's what I can't figure out about about that reasoning or about the Franken reasoning. That is, in some cases, the Franken team wanted to count the votes in the recount when all of a sudden these miraculous votes started popping up out of the iron range and the way some of the absentees were counted i mean i.e in most of the recounts franken got a higher percentage a higher percentage in the recount than he did in the general election which tells me that there was selective recounting i'm not suggesting anything illegal but that that was the fact in a number of precincts he wanted to count the recounts there but in minneapolis in one particular precinct where there was probably no doubt double counting because they counted duplicate ballots he wanted to count the machine tally on election night now how do you you can't have it both ways you have a recount for a recount how did he get away with that uh, i i don't think you can have it both ways uh we disagree with some of the trial court's conclusions on this but listen obviously they want to stop counting when they're ahead uh at this point uh, we haven't we didn't convince the trial court that equal protection requires uh, a uniform standard. You know, it's really interesting, Jason. I'm a good conservative. Uh, not perfect, I know, in your eyes, but I, I consider myself and I'm proud mm -hmm. of being a good conservative. I you know, believe I'm, I'm deeply concerned about what's happening with this country now. Look, you're, look, look Senator Coleman, you're great on judges. You're great on tax and spend. I just got to convince you to get off the environmental bandwagon. Other than that, uh, you're, you're my guy. Health care, too. I would do a bunch of issues in this race. <laughs> I know. University, I'm not. But, but you know, the bottom line is that the other side comes back and says, well, you know, th isn't this consistent with, like, local control and, uh, you know, discretion at the local mm -hmm. level? And my response is that this is not about zoning. Uh, this is not about delivery of a local service. This is an election. And in an election, you really do have to have a uniform standard. You, you can't. Uh, it, it would be very dangerous to democracy if at the local level you had folks deciding with vastly different standards as to what, how, whether they're going to count ballots or not. Uh, it seems to, me, seems to me, Senator Coleman, they are picking and choosing the Supreme Court precedents they like and don't like. Now, frankly, I'll be honest with you. I had some reservations on Bush v. Gore and using equal protection, and I think there's a philosophical uh, um, grain of truth to the notion that election law should reside with the states and this and that. But the fact is, Bush v. Gore does apply. They did impose uniform standards on the state of Florida and for the country. The United States Congress implemented Bush v. Gore with legislation in 2002 called Help America Vote Act. And frankly, Minnesota is in violation of probably both of those. So d does Supreme Court precedent matter or doesn't it? Well, I, I hope it matters uh, to our Supreme Court. Again, that's the place where these constitutional issues we've played out with folks who, one, will accept the fact that they have the responsibility for looking at the Constitution, two, will then accept the fact they have jurisdiction to deal with it, and then hopefully we'll get a, a thoughtful analysis. And, and again, I firmly believe that a thoughtful analysis will say that where you have these systematic, very clear, differences in whether a ballot should be accepted that results in the disenfranchisement of a lot of Minnesota voters, uh, that they're going to come back and say, hey, we got to treat votes in, in, in Carver County the same way they're treated in Minneapolis or St. Louis County or in St. Paul. If the Minnesota State Supreme Court does not find that it was in that that Bush v. Gore applies, clearly the federal courts will take a look at this because they've got to enforce the equal protection clause. They've got to enforce the due process clause. Oh, are you set to appeal to the federal level if the Minnesota State Supreme Court does not rule on these issues? Well, Jason, we haven't ruled anything out. Uh, as you're well aware, when you say the court has to look at it, actually, to move into federal court, uh, and, and by the way, I'm not, I'm presuming we're going to win at the state court. I'm looking beyond that. But in, just in terms of procedure, there are questions of, of whether cert would be granted. There are questions about mm -hmm. what, would, what would happen in terms of 
staying the issuance of, of an election certificate. So there are a lot of questions, all of which I think will be resolved by the Minnesota Supreme Court, applying, looking at clear constitutional law, clear precedent right. that says you can't have differing standards. Open the rest of the ballots, and then we'll see who won this election. Senator Norm Coleman, thanks for stopping by and giving us the update since the uh, trial court court ruled a couple of days ago. We appreciate your time, and uh, Jason, keep us posted. Fight for freedom, Jason. All right, Norm Coleman, thank you. In a battle, a legal battle with Al Franken. That's right. If you thought taxes were scary, try this. Senator Al Franken. I'm Jason Lewis. More calls coming right up with America's Mr. Right.